Hey guys, I'm Father McHale. Uh, today I'm going to try to show you how to make my automatic watermelon farm on how it works. Uh, this one's going to be kind of tough to do, so I came here to my redstone world. It's all flat. There's a couple drawbacks to being in a redstone world. One is that we can't dig down into the ground any further than three layers. But I did my best to break this down in a way that I think you all understand. Uh, but we have to start with one basic. And that's really what a bud switch is. Uh, this right here is a bud switch. And uh, here's the diggings, and I'll show you one start to finish. Uh, a bud switch, and I always start by just digging a five hole, one, two, three, four, five, and then the same all the way around, two, three, four, five. And then I just know from building them before that there's going to be one spot like this, and then these two come around just like that. <coughs> um, yeah, and so for starters, you know, we would dig these out here. And this is one of the most important parts that I think people miss sometimes. If you don't do that, your butt switch will be all messed up, and then we need to just stack one higher here. Uh, you can really do a lot of cool things with these butt switches, and I think they're underused in the game, but probably because a lot of people don't know about them. Um, I say a lot of people. Maybe a lot of people on Xbox 360 don't know about them. But, I mean, the concept behind them is, is pretty awesome. Uh, the way it works is, essentially, there's a... A water block that sits down here, and the boat sits on a pressure plate. And now this is we've created a bud switch. And a bud switch is essentially something that if a block gets placed next to this, if there's any change, let's say we put down a dirt block, it'll cause a change in that water, which will trigger the switch, and then shut back off. So what's the applications then? So if we were to run a wire out here. to a piston, let's say. If we were to put this block here next to this water, it will it will trigger this piston. Just one time, just like that. If we remove the block, same deal. The water will flood that boat off that switch, and we're back to where we started. And so then how do we apply this to something like a mushroom, or I'm sorry, a watermelon farm? Uh, the watermelon farm is pretty simple. Uh, it starts out, mine in my other world has four bud switches, but you can see this one's set up with just two of them. But I could add another one here, another one here, or two side by side, however you want to set it up. And I'll show you how to build this cell right here. This cell is kind of the key to the automated part of the farm. Um, and then you can have as many of these cells as you want. And this is really just two of those individual units face to face against each other. You can see the boats there and the way I have them wired up. It's slightly different than this bud switch over here. But in concept, it's the same. And so I'll, st I'll show you how I've decided would be the easiest way to show it. So I'm going to go over here where I have some more room. Um, for starters, you're going to want to start with a line of three. One in front, then two dots like this. We're going to want to put two blocks of dirt behind them. And then from here, we want to put six blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then seven from here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then these blocks should be split right down the middle. Just like that. And we're going to put one here like that. And then we need to do the same thing on the other side. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then day on this side, just like we did on the other side, this one needs to come in about halfway. And then go in. Of course, we want to make this fly shape on both sides with the one block up. And then you have your basic structure. I know it's kind of a lot to look at, but really it's kind of basic if we just break it down the way I just did. Now we need to put our pistons in, and we want to put them up like this. Not so bad. And then we just need to wire them. To wire them, we want to have two repeaters behind each, and we want to make them on four ticks. I don't know if they need four ticks, but I do four ticks on both of them, and really it works. You know, however you get the logic to work for you, that's you. And then we want to put redstone on these spaces here. Now coming out of this block here, we want to have a redstone torch. Looks like we're going to need one piece of redstone here. All of them should be fired up, so if you don't see that happen, you've already done something wrong. Uh, in these corners here, opposite corners of each other, we want to go ahead and we want to put down our pressure plates. And then we want to put boats on top of each one. 
On this side, and again, I think this is one of the most important parts. Hello, hot cow, thank you for your help. As we want to dig these two spaces out here. There you can see with the boat down, it powers that pressure. It goes through here, it's an inverter. And so Logic says it'll turn off these pistons on this side. Once we've completed this step, and you can see here, since I didn't dig those out down below there, that it, it doesn't function. So you have to make sure you dig these two out. And then you can see the logic behind this. The boat sits on that pressure plate unless water comes down to let it in. So now we need to add some water. Our water goes here on these two blocks and it'll be pouring into these holes. So you can see it'll float that boat, power back up, and then the water gets shut off. And we can do it on the other side. And now our water is in place. This is the most basic setup here. Um, as far as making it power something, I would normally just put these here, and they're important if you're going to have more than one. And then there's our power line. So this will be going to whatever else we decide we're going to build. Alright, as far as the watermelons go, we're going to want to till the land right here. Just like that. They'll grow and then they'll land on that spot. When the watermelon grows, it'll trigger the switch. Uh, to demonstrate it, it would be something like this. So when the watermelon grows there in that spot, switch fires and then it lights up down there. Um, you know, the next step of the problem really becomes how are we going to destroy that watermelon because we really don't want that to be there. To do something like that, the simplest way is to continue these blocks across here. So we're going to do that on both sides. And then we're going to put a line of redstone, so I'm going to need my redstone back. And we're going to need a piston. And then we're going to put pistons facing inward with redstone behind them. So with that in place, if there was a watermelon to grow, This switch will get triggered, and this will clear this so this switch is ready to go again. And if it was to happen on the other side, same deal. If a watermelon grows there, this will clear this so this switch is ready to go again with no problems. Uh, that's important because we want these switches to be able to fire over and over again, that's why they're automatic. Yes, you lose these watermelons here in the big scheme of things, but if you build a farm like this one here that's only one tier, you can see that it will farm this pumpkin here and will push them down into the water. Um, demonstration, and I'll show you how to build this next, is if we were to, if that one was to grow, you can see this one got pushed down into the water and then these watermelons here are running downstream and they'll eventually end up at this spot here. And so then how do we build that bit there? What we're going to want to do, and I'm going to do it a little bit differently than I did over there, as I guess we're going to build it up to. Let's look to see how many blocks apart it needs to be. Looks like total width needs to be five blocks, which isn't so bad. So let's do that. One, two, three, four, five. Five. And then that's going to be like that all the way down. going to want these pushing out this way like this. We're going to want to keep them two apart, so I'm going to build just ahead a little bit since I know we're going to be able to fit them. And these are going to function in the same way, more or less. They're going to be pushing watermelons, so we know that we need to be growing watermelons in these spaces here. Obviously we want to be growing watermelons in these spots here. Oh, rubble. And we only want them to grow forward, so we're going to put blocks up behind them.
And the next thing we need is a water trench. The water should run seven spaces, so it's not going to make it quite all the way to the end, but it'll get close. And then we could repeat this down a level if we wanted to. So if I wanted to go down one level, I could just repeat thing, it would just be down here. Same deal as before, we need two spaces here so we can grow our watermelons. And then we're going to need our drainage ditch. So we're going to just dig this out a little lower than it was and get the water running. Obviously, in order to get the water in, I just need to break one block out, and then the water will run another seven blocks. And you can see now if we would wire these up, I suppose. Now, anytime one of these two back watermelons grows a watermelon, while wow, watermelon plants grows a watermelon, it will automatically farm these watermelons down here. You know, the last step, and you can obviously make these as big as you want to make them with as many streams as you want, would be to make yourself some type of collection thing. You know, it's always nice when they all come down to one place, even though that's definitely not necessary. <laughs> no, it needed to be locked one more spot. Well, you know, that's the way it goes sometimes, I guess. <laughs> so if this was your thing, you know, obviously you could have a stairwell there and your watermelons would all come out there as they farm. Um, a few additional things I did in my own world, like I said, I had had two more watermelon uh, bud switches rig rigged up, uh, and you can check out our house 2.0 video to see that. Also, I had covered each one of these spaces up, so that way I thought that it would reduce the amount of watermelons that were getting away from me. But I'm sure that its effect is more or less negligible. Also, if you're um, planning on doing this underground, uh, just know that the only thing that you actually have to do in order to get the watermelon plants to grow is to put a torch over them. You don't need glowstone or anything like that. All I used was torch. Um, but you can see all this will do here is when a watermelon ends up in this space, it would make it so that piston pushes all the watermelons forward. And walls will also help here to keep most of the watermelons going down. I don't know that these are things that you definitely need to do, but if you're building underground, 
you don't have as many problems. You know, underground there's no place for them to go but where I want them to. But this is almost exactly the one that I have in my house, minus the two bud switches. Um, and again, I'll show you how it would work if a watermelon was to grow here, and obviously it's not because it's night, because that's part of the problem with being underground. As you can see, that all of those farm at once, and then if there was any watermelons, which there may have been one or two, they'll all get drained down there. There, as you can see, there's a couple slices that are coming. And so without doing anything, this could just be a wall in your house, and the rest of it would be hidden, and you could always walk up and there would just be watermelons that would come out the hole there. Uh, I know this was a really long tutorial, and I'm sure I missed something. This is one of those things that I'd have to show people in first person. The bud switches are a little bit are, are a bit much to wrap your head around, but once you understand them, you can really do a lot of cool things. Uh, I hope you enjoyed my tutorial on building a watermelon farm. Uh, I'm Father Mikhail, and you guys take care. Hey guys, quick look at uh, the melanomatic in our world here. You can see, obviously, it collects watermelons. Um, we got about 53 there just when I came into the world. And you can see, hopefully, that it's pretty similar to the one that I just showed you. Um, you can see I have, what do I have here? I'm actually way more than mine, but it's because I could dig underground. So I have one, two, three, four, five. So 10 down here and then another four up here. So 14 watermelons there total. And then there's my two bud switches, very similar to the setup that I showed you. And then the only difference is that I've added two additional inputs. That's for one bed switch down here. And for another bud switch down here on the other end. Uh, and then that should farm itself. You know, all we have to do is go down into the house. And eventually watermelons would come out of here. Uh, I won't wait. I just wanted to show you so you could see in principle that it's almost the exact same thing that I just showed you. Um, yeah, I hope this helps. Definitely reach out to us with any questions that you have. I'm Father McKelly. You guys take care.